Have you ever tried to edit 360 footage in your video editing software, but just stop because the experience wasn't smooth and snappy, but it was just lag, 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 lag slow and overall just frustrating to edit. Well, today I'll be sharing with you my workflow to editing 360 footage in Premiere Pro without any lag. Really? Really, really. And even though you're not a Premiere Pro user, if you're finding that you have lag in Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve, this workflow might work for you as well. There are some cons though, but I'll let you determine that later on once you hear about them. And you can decide for yourself whether this is a process that would work for your workflow. I will also share with you what plugin you can use in Premiere Pro to edit your 360 footage if you did not know that already. I recently edited a ton of 360 footage from my recent trip to Turkey. I created this cinematic travel film completely shot on the Insta360 One S One Insta360 One RS One Inch Edition. Long name. If you haven't seen that, you can pause this video, go to that one, I'll be linking it up here or in the description below if you wanna watch it later after this video. So here's how I first was starting to edit my 360 footage in Premiere Pro, the laggy way. First, if you don't have this already, go to Insta360's website and look for their reframe plugin tutorial and that will give you a link to the GoPro website, which is actually the company that created this plugin for Premiere Pro and After Effects. And I think they have one for DaVinci Resolve as well. But you can just go ahead and download this for your computer if you don't have it already. We're back in Premiere Pro. I have these 360 clips here. And right now I only have a few, but once you start adding a bunch of clips and you start to do masking and layering and a lot of stuff, it can get very laggy very quickly. And I was doing a lot of speed ramping. And once you do that, in Premiere Pro, it was just, just a pain. And just to give you some context, I'm editing on an Apple computer on an M1 Max chip, so it's not a slow computer either. But let me quickly show you what you could do with the GoPro Effects Reframe plugin. So once you have your effect, you can type Reframe, GoPro Effects Reframe. Let's drag it into our clip right here. And if you go to Effect Controls, click on GoPro Effects Reframe. Projection will change that to UHD 16 by nine. And let's scale this to 100% to fulfill the entire frame. You can see that there are some markers over here. So if you have the effect selected, you can click and pan around the image. You can tilt. You can select what angle you want. You can also select the zoom camera and adjust that zoom. And just by this, you can tell it's just the one clip. The experience is not very smooth. It's actually a little bit laggy and kind of a little bit slow. So even if I wanted to add, let's say a keyframe, start the pan. Okay, so I added a couple of keyframes over here for pan and tilt. And I'll just quickly play it. I press play and it took a couple of seconds, a second. So you can see it can get very frustrating very quickly if you're just editing directly in Premiere Pro using this. So there is a better way to do this and let me show you what that is. So if you're shooting on an Insta360 camera, which is what most people are if you have a 360 camera, they have their own editing software, Insta360 Studio 2023, but you're not able to do everything that you would like to do. You cannot do masking or layer sound design and all of that, but it's really good if you want to prep your footage for Premiere Pro. So we'll import all our 360 footage. So we have our 360 footage right here already and I have already worked with this clip over here, but I'll reset all of this and I'll show you what to do. So we have this clip over here. If you zoom in and out with your mouse, you're able to quickly just zoom in and out and just dragging it around. It's a much pleasant experience to view and edit this in this software. What we'll do is prep this and I want this clip to start about here and you tap on the plus marker here to add a keyframe. And then as we go here, I am going to pause and start to pan the camera this way, maybe here. Yeah, maybe about here and then I'll zoom in a little bit and tilt up a little bit and I'll add a keyframe over here. 
by adding that plus button. So now you can view what you have so far. And if you're happy with it, you can go and export it. Another thing that you can do is just set in and out points for the points that you want to use in the video. So you can just do that by hitting command or control bracket, left bracket, and we'll go over here and we'll hit command or control right bracket. And this is the part that you'll be exporting. And once you're happy with that, click on start export and we'll export it in ProRes 4K. Uh, resolution will be in 4K and the encoding format will be ProRes 422. Make sure this is selected because you're exporting the reframe video and not the entire 360 video. And then you'll start to export your video or add it to the queue if you're doing multiple of these sort of exports. So let's talk about ProRes, but before we go into that, let me show you another example of how you can use this to add motion blur to your footage if you're doing, for example, like a time-lapse or a hyperlapse. Before I move on, I forgot to mention as well as once you have your keyframe selected, you can click on the middle and sort of ease in those keyframes. So you can have a linear one or a slip and fade out and there's different options for you to smoothen out those keyframes to make them look a little nicer. So right now I have this selected. And if I wanna speed this out and I've already reframed it, if I wanna speed it up, so all I need to do is go from here and click on this flash sign like the one I have back here. Click on time shift. And from here, you just hover over and just tell where you want the time shift to end. And you click on that. Once the time shift's done, you can also select how fast you want it to be. So let's try 32X and see what that looks like. And let's play it back. Perfect. And what we'll do now is add some motion blur. Keep in mind that motion blur will be applied on your video after you export it. So you won't be able to see motion blur directly here on the Insta360 Studio. After I export it, this is what that clip looks like. You can see there's a ton of motion blur and I should probably done this a little slower, maybe like an 8x speed. I think I did 32. It's too fast but you get the idea the motion blur has been added and it looks really nice you can't really do it in premiere pro unless you get another external plugin and so far the only ones that i know are paid unless you go into after effects now let me tell you about prores so prores is a high quality lossless video compression codec and it's meant to be like an intermediary codec for video editing and not really for final product delivery but because it's made for video editing premiere pro plays and edits this kind of footage with this ProRes codec very, very smoothly. The negative side of this though, is that these files can be quite large. And if you're working with a ton of exported ProRes footage, then you be prepared to have a lot of disk space or hard drive space. So let's jump back into Premiere Pro. I have exported all the footage that I want to use with the framing that I want to use from the 360 clips. And I just have a folder called reframe video. As I drag these clips to my timeline, just playing them here, you can see how smooth they play. And because they're in ProRes, you don't lose quality, so you're able to still do all your color grading and color correcting here as well. So let me show you with this clip right here that I was trying to edit directly in Premiere Pro. Again, I already pressed play and it took a bit of time for it to play. And it's still pretty laggy and I'm at already at a half, half percent playback resolution. And now if I go back to that export exported ProRes clip right here, let's bring this back to full resolution. Super smooth and I'm going to mask this and do some sort of transition and it's just going to be a lot easier to do that now that I have this ProRes file. And to give you a look of my timeline here for that cinematic travel film I did, there was just a ton of masking and a lot of layers of sound design. So if you wanna check that video out or if you want me to talk about any step in the process of this video, let me know in the comments below and I may make a video for you. Also did a lot of speed ramping with these clips and doing them in ProRes was just so much easier as well. But there is a drawback that you cannot make edits in that ProRes file if you want to make an adjustment in your angle of view or the zoom 
So if you wanted to do that, you have to go back to Insta360 Studio, re-export it to ProRes, bring it back into Premiere Pro and edit it then. So that's it for this video, but next you can watch this video so you can come hang out with me in Turkey where I talk about what is becoming one of my favorite travel cameras these days. I'll see you there. Thank you.